I must warn you, I am a quadruple black belt ninja boxing master and the regional quest master of my wizards and lizards guild. Ah, Facebreaker, you had some balls in the beginning. You essentially replaced Electronic Arts yearly Fight Night installment for a year and dared to name drop Mike Tyson's punch out as a source of inspiration. Those are definitely some boots to fill as the nostalgia people have for that game is enormous. Facebreaker is Americanized and in your face. Goofy ass attitude is shoved down your throat as beautifully designed ugly pieces of cartoony shit start bopping around as that hideous woman song by Wolf Mother starts pumping as you grace the menu screens. It's eye rolling for sure, but the lighting and animation is well done. It's almost, almost excusable. In fact, it probably would be if there was a respectable hidden gem beneath the exterior in which there kind of is faintly, but really hardly at all. <laughs> there is no kind of story mode at all. You merely fight to fight. The default mode is fighting random one-off matches, while the arcade mode is just fighting a succession of battles. There is no way to get to know these new characters, which are basically just a marathon of every cliched character ever created for a movie, including favorites like the Samuel Jackson impersonator and a Harajuku Japanese jailbait chick. This almost seems to work somehow too, but then it also doesn't. I think Twisted Metal managed to do the ridiculous characters best. The backstories existed, they were also kind of amusing, but you wouldn't really encounter them unless you decided you wanted to. Fighting against the computer, not very exciting. I did it for about an hour and I've satisfied my life's requirement. The gameplay is too simple for that, there's no point. You punch high or low by tapping square or X, you dodge high or low by holding square or X, and you block by holding R1 and pressing square or X. There you go. Matches are like rock, paper, scissors with these three basic moves as you mix between high and low and work on getting your reaction times as close to lightning fast as possible. While simplicity is an underrated feature, beating out the computer in such a way is not rewarding. The main draw, at least for me, is beating out another human opponent with simple reflexes, crushing their concentration as they become exasperated and watching these exaggerated punches all land square on their little avatar's face. It's kind of a rush and it feels great too. It's a momentary great experience. Momentary is the key word here too. Beating the shit out of someone feels nice and as mentioned the animations are top notch. But then it becomes boring. There's no significant variety between characters and play styles. You can't really do that much. Not all games require the extensive move list and combo system of, say, Soul Calibur, but even still, Facebreaker feels a bit dry. Successive battles online are okay at first, but wear thin all too quickly. The online works well enough, I guess, as far as a barebones online presentation can, but Facebreaker truly requires human opponents sitting right next to you talking shit as you talk shit back. Everything else is pointless. Facebreaker is great for a very short time, and I mean that as under two hours total, and then never really worthwhile or interesting again. Facebreaker is like a quarter of a good game. It's in good enough standing to check out any future sequels, but uh, I probably won't ever turn this on again. I just can't really recommend it. Facebreaker on the PlayStation 3 gets a 4 out of 10. Oh, my God.